surface maps, new difficulty and gameplay options, ship interior decoration and new hub modules, new game plus changes, Xbox Series X graphic modes and more. Plus there is some major teasers for the future of Starfield and the DLC. It's a good day to be Starborn. Let's go! Let me know in the comments what you think of this patch. So let's first cover more or less everything that is coming at a high level. Now this patch is out right now on the Steam beta and if they follow their normal cadence, it'll be about two weeks or so that it'll be also be out on Xbox, depending on, you know, like bug fixes or like anything that, that they may come across during like this beta period. So this patch adds improved surface maps, new gameplay options, added ship decoration mode for the interior of ships, plus new hab modules, added tabs to the container menus to make managing your inventory easier, the added ability to change traits and appearances after entering the Unity, added dialogue camera toggle in the settings. Let's just pause right here because I won't cover this later. This is actually a huge change for immersion. I never realized that there is sort of that disconnect when you click on a character and there's sort of that quick like flash to black or whatever as it like zooms in and you get that really close view of the character by turning the setting off there is none of that it's just like a clear flow into the dialogue really really like this change and it flows much nicer when you're talking to multiple people and sort of just like playing the game casually huge change really really like this and added display settings for xbox series x to prioritize visuals or performance plus a ton of quests and bug fixes general stability performance improvements improvements to the characters fleeing, avoidance and pathfinding, as well as various issues with object placement, assumedly that'll help with some of the decoration stuff. So improved surface maps is the big ticket item here. Now, I thought this may only be for cities just when I was watching their dev update, but this is on every planet, right? Like anytime you land on a planet, you can actually just bring up the surface map now and actually see everything that's on that surface, including structures you've built, right? Like if you go to your outpost, you'll actually be able to see what you've built. This is great. Like the 3D view in itself just looks really cool and it fits like the Starfield aesthetic. Part of this as well is I think it does make a difference for exploration. Like, you know, regardless of what you think about exploring the planets and, and what have you in, in Starfield, but just by bringing up this surface map more than once when I was just like testing around with this and like going to the various planets, I was like, oh, what's that over there? Like I haven't seen that before and because you can actually see what things look like on the surface map, it does entice you to go over there a little bit more when you just, you know, previously you'd bring up the map and well, it's just like a blue mess, but this is a really cool change. I love the way that it looks when you bring it up. It also works in all the cities, like regardless if you go to Neon, Aquila, what have you. Another addition here as well is that if you bring up your scanner, you'll be able to see where all the shops and like locations in those cities are. So if you're looking for something specific, it'll be much easier to find as well. The new gameplay options are a huge addition. So we'll break down these like quickly at a bit of a high level as there is a lot of different settings here. So you've got player and enemy combat damage as well as player and enemy ship damage. Now there is a new setting here called extreme on top of like very hard. So it's like an extra like hard mode on top of that. You've got your ammo weight, which you can turn on. You can increase or decrease your carry capacity. The car go access distance so how far away from your ship you have to be to actually be able to access it you can change that to you know limited or be able to access it from anywhere vendor credits huge one because vendors have like no credits medical item healing so how quickly like any of the healing items will actually heal you food healing and sleep healing exactly the sort of the same categories sustenance is like your hunger and thirst you can add this to add positive effects or both positive and negative effects so say if you aren't eating and drinking you'll actually get negative effects from that combat affliction gain affliction treatment and affliction prognosis all sort of fit in similar categories about how quickly you can get afflictions and treat them and the prognosis same with environmental damage and afflictions as well as environmental damage restoration are all sort of fitting in that category as well aim assist makes sense what that is and then the save options for rest wait travel and pause after that now what's really cool about this is that depending on the settings you change you can actually increase or decrease the amount of experience gain that you get. So it fits in a really cool way that you can sort of create your own difficulty setting here that'll either gain you experience or lose you experience depending on the settings you choose. And it fits within the game's style, I think. My only disappointment here is that there isn't like a true survival mode. You can sort of make one by tinkering with these settings a little bit, but I would really like if BGS did like their own legitimate survival mode. Like you guys know that I love them. I've been talking about them with Fallout 4 recently on this channel as well. 
I would love if they had their own actual survival mode here. The one thing that is missing is like the need to actually sleep. Now it is a little different in Starfield because like, you know, if you're exploring on random planets, you're not going to come across beds as much as you would in say Skyrim or Fallout or what have you to actually be able to sleep. But I mean, you've got your ship there anyway. You can always just return to the ship if you need to sleep, right? So I, I think that that's a bit of a downside that that option isn't there. It would be nice if it was and hopefully they do actually make their own full survival mode. Ship decoration is another good quality of life addition that just makes total sense and it was a little weird why it wasn't there initially so essentially here you can bring up your scanner now and go straight into the decorate mode to be able to decorate in your ship and there are new empty hab modules that you can add to your ship which still give you like their standard benefits so you know passenger size etc they're just actually empty so you can customize them yourself what is actually really huge about this and i didn't mention it in the dev update and i haven't seen anyone else talk about it is that you no longer need to make like those specific hab modules modules that have the engineering stations, etc., on them, right? Because you can build them yourself in the decorate mode. So if you want, a, you know, a spacesuit, workbench, cooking station, etc., you can now build them on any of the hab modules. What this will mean is that you can make smaller, tighter ships that aren't like filled with all these hab modules that you need just to be able to get all of the crafting stations and etc. on there. You can also build the self-service bounty clearance on your ship as well. That is absolutely huge for like anyone that has bounties in different systems like it was always tricky to be able to clear your bounty if you've got it in like all the major systems now you can just have one on your ship and just be able to clear it from there also a great change as well and then like i'd be remiss to talk about you know just the actual decoration of it right like you can you know create your own decorating and etc that you can do from here as well the new game plus changes we'll touch on briefly as i don't want to spoil anything here when you start a new game plus now you can change your traits as well as your appearance there's a good option so you can keep your levels and skills and like everything and then sort of be able to get a bit of a refresh when you go into new game plus because it is a little bit disappointing that you're essentially just doing the same thing again and now you can change your trades to feel a little bit different for any of the different runs that you go into the xbox series x new graphical modes now obviously I can't really test these in the Steam beta patch because it's, you know, it's not an Xbox. But just to quickly cover this, you've got the frame rate target. So you can now choose between 30, 40, and 60 or an uncapped frame rate on VRR displays. Now, if you don't have a VRR display, you will still be able to select from 30 to 60. Screen tearing may occur at times when selecting 60 on a non-VRR display. And then the separate setting is prioritized. So you can choose between visuals or performance. Now, obviously performance will try and target 60 frames per second. And you can then use that or use prioritized visuals to target the higher resolution while maintaining the full special effects of lighting and crowds, etc. It's going to be really interesting to actually test this. Like, I honestly can't wait for the Digital Foundry video that breaks this down and see what it actually changes and everything. But this is still just like generally a good change. Like, anytime you can give the player choice to decide how they want to play the game in terms of visual settings is actually like a good thing. So, really huge change here. Now, at the end of the May update video that they posted, there is some teasers as well, like land vehicles. They showed a brief shot of them and mentioned that land vehicles will actually be coming to the game. This is great for planet exploration, brother than you know running between location to location it's definitely the lowest point of the game in my opinion is just like running between points of interest on planets and being able to you know travel in a vehicle hopefully they got some cool physics behind them so you can you know jump on those sick moons and all that kind of stuff i'm really curious how this is going to be implemented like will it be say like a mass effect where your ship stores the vehicle and then you can like drop it on a planet like zoom around go to wherever you want to go or will the vehicle be stored at like your outpost you need to have an outpost there to actually like build the vehicle and then travel around curious around the specifics of this and they didn't really cover it either the second tease was for new quest with a shot of like a free star collective looking building with some wanted posters in the background they did not elaborate on what this is at all it could be like a bounty hunting system but i mean that is kind of already in the game maybe it's just like a set dressing of like a room that there is you know some stuff coming here in that location who knows right we'll have to wait to see more the big one though was the further teasers for the shattered space dlc or expansion and we did get a brief sort of first look at it with this screenshot here now i've talked about the shattered space like what we could expect right with house varun etc in a video which i'll link here if you want to go and watch that next but it's good to see overall that bgs are listening to player feedback by adding all the changes that we're talking about here but i'm really excited to see what they're adding with this dlc as bgs do 
do some unique things with their DLCs, right? They always add new mechanics and new flavors on the game modes and systems. Like, you know, even in most recent with Fallout 4 with Nuka World and Far Harbor. Really curious to know more about this expansion. We don't know exactly when it's coming, but Todd Howard did say in the kind of funny interview he did the other day that we can expect it in the fall. So sort of like September-ish and onwards, whenever that will be. And the beta toolkit for creations is also with modders. Todd mentioned that in the kind of funny interview. And it was also mentioned here that they have the toolkit. So hopefully we'll hear more about official mod support coming to the game in the near future. But let me know your thoughts on all these changes in the comments down below. Is this a good update? Do you like the changes that they've made? I'd love to hear your own thoughts as I think this is a really quality update and it's great to hear more from Starfield. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching this video till the end. Thank you to our members for supporting the channel. I apologize for my voice today, but my name is Norza and I hope you have a great day.